everyone welcome to my final episode of my fashion series one so this is episode six i hope you've enjoyed them so far if you've sticked with it and watched them all um because i really enjoyed making them but like i said this has kind of been my first attempt of this and my first proper kind of putting myself out there of dissecting fashion events and speaking about set design and set designers that inspire me and stuff like that so i hope you've enjoyed it i did like i said three generic ones and three specific ones so this is my final specific one and i'm guessing you've seen from the thumbnail already that it is on transport now i was spoiled for choice for this um section because so many fashion events centered around transport is crazy but these are the top five that i have picked that i really really enjoyed so yeah, so this has been really fun to film. I mean, I definitely had to squeeze lots of filming in and it's all been a bit hectic, but I feel like that's how it comes when you're juggling so much at the moment. But yeah, like I said, really enjoyed making it. So yeah, without further ado, I think I've spoken about everything. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. watch the previous episode you know I don't get straight into the fashion events um as soon as it starts I talk a bit about set designers fashion history creating the experience so for the finale so for this final episode this episode six I knew that I had to pick an amazing set designer um and that's what I did I did some research and I love this gentleman I think he is insane as being a set designer and all the work that he has created and he is called Gary Card now just a bit of background on him is that he was born in Bournemouth I love Bournemouth but raised in London I love London and that's where he did theatre design so that's with what his degree is in and this has aided him in fashion set designs now he's built up an amazing clientele for the likes of Balenciaga, Kenzo, Hermes, um, Machino, Charles Jeffrey like the list goes on and on and on and on and he's actually established himself in the fashion industry in London as the go-to set designer, the go-to illustrator, the go-to costume maker, the go-to um, sculptor like he's just got so much going for him he's so creative and so talented that it's amazing now he actually states as being a set designer as constantly compromising in the way that obviously you're making something for somebody else so it's not for yourself so you're always compromising and always trying to think what they want but you're applying it because of your skills so constantly compromising and he says with that he's a bit fussy with who he picks as clients to take on um, but when he does, he does them to the best of his ability and does an amazing job as we've all seen and with a large clientele like that, he must be really, really amazing. And I actually read an interview with him saying that sustainability and set design doesn't actually go hand in hand, but where he can, he tries to, you know, repurpose the sets, perhaps giving them to schools or other organisations that can reuse them. And obviously I'm a really big advocate for sustainable set designs. I really, really want it to be something that every single set designer does. So I definitely think giving them to schools is such a good idea and an amazing thing idea to work upon but i really wish set design could really go hand in hand with sustainability and create that as the new norm i really wish that could be done but he actually states brands like gucci and hermes they actually have huge warehouses where every single one of their set designs their store windows go to obviously i think the likes of gucci i could imagine them having like a gucci museum i don't know if they've got that already but i can imagine them having that and putting them out or you know after 100 years bringing out the first set design but definitely that's not really that sustainable is it when it could be reused but i suppose if they reuse it in the future perhaps i don't know but back to gary card he is an amazing set designer and definitely someone you should research and his success rate is just crazy with all those clients and all that experience and success so he is really really amazing and definitely a set designer that i had to include in this final episode <laughs> So now on to the first fashion event of this series. I knew I had to pick a good one. And with the recent release of the new James Bond movie, I thought I would include this one because this one really gives me the biggest James Bond vibe ever. It is the Ralph Lauren for 2017 Ready to Wear. Now, at this event, it had all of the designers um, collection of cars there. So there was this James Bond sleek, 
um, moment and it was at New York Fashion Week. So they kind of lined all the cars up and the audience sat around and the models walked around the cars. Now the collection of cars were really, really impressive with the likes of the 1938 Bugatti Type S7 SC Atlantic, which was worth around $40 million. So very, very expensive. There was also Ferraris, Porsches, Aston Martins, Mercedes, and it was just so amazing. And this kind of gave a very kind of beauty of the cars reflected in the models the slickness the sophistication the elevation that's definitely what i got and the cars were some of them were very brightly colored which really contrasted some of the structured gray suit pieces but then there was beautiful ball gowns of red and yellow and black and it was just such an exclusive event and i think if i was there i'd feel so like oh i'm exclusive i'm important i'm you know, the Bond girl. That's definitely the vibe I got. There was models like Kendall Jenner, Bella Hadid, and the models actually were men and women, and they showed the new purple labels. And what I really liked, I like details in fashion events, so that's what I really, really liked. And all the waiters had Ralph Lauren embellished and um, jumpsuits on, so I imagine just being sat there watching this amazing collection, and then you get served, and you're like, oh wow. Ralph Lauren again like I just like all these little details and the models and celebrities were allowed exclusive access to the cars so I just it's just amazing how an event can be made of just such an iconic beautiful piece and I feel like I definitely got this idea of Ralph Lauren is quite pricey so perhaps buying this it will never age like you'd buy an Aston Martin it will never age because it's a classic so that's definitely the kind of vibe I got I don't know if that was the message behind it but kind of if you buy our pieces they are classics and they're to keep and they're to bring out like you know like Sunday's best or at Christmas or something like that that's what Ralph Lauren is not just kind of fast fashion um that you wear every day or something that's definitely what I got from this so it's like an investment but I definitely like the bond kind of sexy feel of this um, event I just feel like if you went there you'd feel so important and luxurious and I just really thought it was an amazing event so now on to the second fashion event of this series it's the Chanel autumn 2017 ready to wear now I feel like this is very famous very well known it's very iconic in the way that it was played on such a huge theme and it was very very impressive I feel like Chanel did something similar to this with their globe that I spoke about I believe in episode one I've kind of they've all kind of become a bit of a blur but this had a huge huge rocket in the center of it and it was at um, Paris Fashion Week in the Grand Palais I think that's how you, you pronounce it now the Grand Palais I love that venue I feel like it's such an iconic venue that I've seen a lot of fashion events at but it's just very beautiful but simplistic but not the same kind of I don't know I just really like that venue um I would love to do a fashion event there but back to the Chanel event it had this huge rocket it was massive and the models kind of walked around it but kind of in like a square sometimes crossing over and for the finale of this event the Chanel rocket actually blasted off and there was smoke and it raised and there was also like a 10 minute countdown and then the models lined up and listened to Elton John's Rocket Man as in the song so I felt like that was took extreme engineering and organization as an event manager from that point of view there was the Chanel ambassadors like Pharrell Williams, Cara Delevingne and Lily Rose Depp and they were all sat on the front row watching this amazing amazing event now we had models there like Gigi Hadid and the collection was very tied in to this um theme there was space kind of suits there was kind of like the glitter and that's definitely what I got from this collection they really tied it in to the event set design now Gabrielle Chanel who actually founded the fashion house in 1909 was absolutely fascinated by astrology um, and like zodiac and everything like that so I felt like that was a really nice touch to um kind of bring into this event this kind of space and how her fantasy is kind of be brought into modern day almost like I just thought it was a really nice touch very respectful and very in keeping in the brand so although it seems so modern to do 
a um, rocket, a space kind of themed event, it's actually quite historic and pulling from the roots because that's what the founder was really interested in. So I really like that. It did kind of remind me, like I said, of the Globe um, kind of setup. I think the Globe was in that venue as well. I can't completely remember, but definitely an amazing event. And like I said before, if a guest is sat there, there is a wow factor about that space rocket there. Do you know what I mean? Like there's something that's going to make them say wow like that is impressive especially with the countdown so the tension building up definitely with the takeoff like it was just definitely very immersive engaging and exciting i suppose something very different um and the collection was very lovely and quite a lot of celebrities there as well so overall a very amazing event <laughs> So the third fashion event for this series is the Louis Vuitton for 2012 Ready to Wear. Now, obviously in episode one, I did speak about the spring, summer 2012 Ready to Wear, which I love the white carousel. So this was kind of the autumn later on um, of the year. So I definitely really liked this one. It really made me feel like Polar Express, the film, but I don't know if it was meant to do that, but kind of very Christmassy and coming into fall, like I definitely got that feel. So as the clock time chair, what the guests saw was this train emerge into the room and they came out of these like black gates and this false floor folded back and revealed the train track. So the guests really had no idea that this kind of train theme was going to appear. So this steam train was actually one carriage and it was navy and gold. Now the Louis Vuitton team actually made this so it's not like they imported it from I don't know the local railway or whatever they made it and it wasn't just the beautiful exterior it was the stunning interior as well with kind of like the um, shelves for the luggage and the seats and everything. I saw some gorgeous gorgeous shoots of the models inside the train and it was beautiful. But it was definitely filmed in a different era, so it was meant to make you think back in time. It wasn't filmed in the era of 2012, but I think it really gave a really sophisticated and sweet kind of feel. So the models actually came off the train and was accompanied by a porter and the models then walked kind of around the train. But what I really, really liked about this collection um, or this event, sorry, was that the models were in the beautiful garments, but the porters were holding the luggage and this was a nice touch and kind of paid respect because the brand actually began in creating luggage and trunks so by having the porters really showing off the luggage really paid respect to that and kind of brought in the heritage of the company so i really really liked this event and it really sticks with me bringing this train in and it was quite simple if i'm honest because all it was was a train moving a certain amount and then the beautiful um models walking around but i feel like having the details of the porters holding the luggage and i just really really liked it So now onto the penultimate fashion event of this series. It is the Tommy Hilfiger for 2016 Ready to Wear. Now, this event is definitely one that's iconic in the way of this kind of idea of sheer size, like I was saying about the rocket. So it incorporated this huge, huge ship in the event. So it was at New York and guests were treated to this like mini vacation almost with a giant cruise ship that served as the runways for the models. Now, what I always go on about is these details. I absolutely love the details. So there was smokestacks, benches, shuffle board game that was painted onto the decks and the guests were actually um, seated and they found luggage tags which gave them information about the event, you know, like where to go and what to expect and stuff like that. So I really, really liked that. Now the collection itself was very like sea inspired. You could say nautical with the um, stripes and stuff like that. So it's nice that they tied it in but then there was also these kind of 40s style dresses i saw tiaras and those models like Gigi hadid ailey baldwin and they walked around the deck so i definitely think seeing this huge ship with the theme of the nautical collection and also some different pieces that stick out would really make you think about the collection and there's definitely this idea of if a collection a set design even is very large and eye-catching it does catch the news so it probably had a lot of press as well because it's like did you go to that fashion event with the huge ship do you know what i mean um but really really good and there was actually like seats on the um deck of the ship and i definitely would want those seats do you know what i mean to be actually sat on the runway 
with the models dressed in the nautical collection of the ship like i just i just thought it was really cool and exciting and definitely a strong ship sea boat theme um that they tied in throughout so i really really like this event <laughs> So now onto the final fashion event of this episode of this series. I knew I had to pick a amazing one to finish this series with, to finish this episode with. So I picked the Spring Summer Fenty Puma 2018 show. Now this was so exciting. It's one of those that literally had you on your seat like, <gasps> and breathe, and breathe, and breathe. Now this was because it included motorbikes and this was at the Park Avenue Armory for New York Fashion Week. So the show actually included a trio of these daredevil motocross stuntmen who were on motorbikes and they were doing tricks over these really nice and iconic pink sand dunes so the event was very x games inspired you definitely saw that in the collection of 56 looks because there was biker shorts scuba onesies french cut swimsuits the men's clothes were oversized there was baggy cargoes hoodies and what i really liked about this fashion event is that the models were actually on the bike because sometimes fashion events you have these really crazy experiences but the fashion isn't actually anything to do with it they just kind of accompany each other which sometimes works but with this the models were actually on the motorbikes showing off the collections as well as walking around the pink sand dunes showing off the collections and at the end of this event the amazing rihanna came out with some stunning sunglasses out um, to show her beautiful event and a beautiful collection that she had created but i definitely think it was a very good um kind of indication of what rihanna is like in the way that she is very daredevil and standy out and still gorgeous and I definitely feel like we got this in the event and definitely in the collection. So you definitely got a kind of that experience of being sat on your seat and can't breathe because, oh my gosh, look at this amazing stunt. So hopefully when the guests see the garments outside of this environment, they'll definitely still get that on their seats excited feel and want to purchase it and kind of associate those feelings with the brand as a whole. So I definitely hope that that paid off. Um, but yeah, that's the final event of this episode. <laughs> So this is the final episode of this series. Honestly, this has been like my baby that I've been working on for the last few months, gathering research, gathering sources. So I'm so excited to finally have it all out there, but definitely like now it's done, I'm like next, what's next? Do you know what I mean? Um, but like I said before, this has definitely been really good for me in the way that I've been able to dissect these fashion events and kind of look into set design and how kind of, the guests are experiencing these collections and how this can all enhance the collections. I definitely think there's not a lot out there on fashion set designers or fashion event managers and I kind of want to focus on that and look into that for my own purpose and my own career because that's what excites me. I'm not saying that's the only thing I'm ever going to do in my career but definitely something I would love to do and definitely a dream. Um, and obviously the fashion industry can be very niche and um, specific and obviously the best of the best is what hits the criteria but hopefully researching these events I mean I don't mind making these videos because I really really enjoy them but I'm hoping it will help others in the situation of wanting to get into set designing into fashion event management and stuff like that so I definitely like I said I don't want to let it go but obviously it's all out there now this was my six episodes three specific three generic obviously like I said before some of these events do overlap some can be multiple um topics but I just kind of split them in the way that I wanted to do so so yeah so obviously please comment any of your favorite fashion events I've definitely promoted that throughout the whole series because I want this to kind of be a little like hub where you, everyone can research and find amazing fashion set designs or amazing fashion collections so that's definitely what I want this to be but obviously please like and comment um like and comment yeah <laughs> like comment and subscribe um if this is for you but thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day mm -hmm.